Hello again and welcome to Man's Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. I'm your host. And I'm Carla Garrick. <laughs> I'm just realizing we're doing the dual thing. We do the taping and the Facebook Live, and I realize that Facebook Live we're all screwed up because our producer will be happy to hear that because <laughs> we're not good with the Facebook Live. Um, anyways, welcome to the show. Um, today is Tuesday, October 29th. That means that one week from today, Manchester residents will be voting in a new mayor. Um, and Carla and I are lucky today. We invited uh, Victoria Sullivan, who I hope will be our next mayor, on to join us so we can talk about Manchester and you know what's going on in the last week of this election. Um, for those of you who are unfamiliar where you vote or whatever, you can go to the Manchester City Clerk's website at manchesternh.gov forward slash city clerk. You can put in your address there and find out where your polling location is. Um, there's no excuse not to vote. Polls are open at 6 in the morning and don't close till 7 o'clock at night. So you have all day and there shouldn't be big lines. I mean, you might have to wait one or two people, but get out there and vote. It's really important. But anyways, joining us today is on what hopefully will be our next mayor of Manchester, yeah. Victoria Sullivan. Good morning. Thanks How are you? Me. I'm good. How's it going with the one week left? It's busy. So for folks that may not know who I am, Victoria Sullivan, I served in the New Hampshire House with Tammy. I served for two terms. I served on the House Education Committee for all four years, and I was also an assistant majority leader. Before that, I was the PTA president for my children's school, and I served on the executive board for New Hampshire PTA. I've served on the Heritage Commission, and I served as a selectman in the city. So that's my resume. So your people. <laughs> <laughs> that's my resume. You've been doing this for a while. Right? I have. Well, I've been a community volunteer since uh, my kids were little. Right. Just my husband works two jobs. We're a blue collar family. And um, so that made me chief cook and bottle washer, you know. <laughs> so it's not only PTA mom, but I was coach and team mom and all the things that my husband didn't have time to do because he was working for us. Right. Um, so, yeah. So I've been involved in soccer, baseball on the South Little League. Well, it's not South anymore. It's now Manchester Little League because um, the South side joined with the West side to form Manchester Little time. League. So, so are you uh, Park. sending your Little League team out to go canvassing for you, Miss Victoria? <laughs> no, actually, I ran a drama club. I started and ran a drama club when the elementary schools for seven years, and I I, I don't even use those kids' like pictures right. in my stuff. Like, right. you don't use kids just to do good. that stuff. No, for those who missed that yeah. tidbit, sorry, I t promised I wouldn't talk a lot, but that's not going to happen. <laughs> um, I filed a complaint against Alderman Bill Berry um, this past Friday, I guess, um, because, or maybe it was a week ago, Friday? no, I think it was no, Friday. It was last it was Friday. Friday. Yeah, things are um, happening because fast. Because there's picked, he used um, football players from West High School on West High Football Field, so it's on school property, um, to hold his campaign signs, and then they, he sent them out knocking on doors for him, which, you know, I'm not disparaging his volunteer efforts. It's great if you're co volunteering to coach and all these different things, and it's great if you're mentoring kids. But there's rules in place, um, specific school district rules, and also in the city charter that prohibit this type of activity. Yeah. And for a good reason, because teenagers are very, um, you know, susceptible to peer pressure. And, you know, it, it's just kind of weird well, especially if you're coach. On a team. Right. Especially on a team. Like, you have a team attitude. You're supposed to do, do everything, everything together. together. And if you're the, you know, the naysayer that says, no, I don't. You're the bad guy. Yeah, you are. And you're, and you're 16 years old and you're and the bad guy. And it's not it's right to not put good. kids in that position. No, it really it isn't. isn't. And so I filed a complaint. Um, to ask it to go before the alderman, which it will go before and, and um, frankly, tonight, actually. I mean, the rules are oh. very clear. I mean, it says, under no circumstances <laughs> will you do these things, including right. distribute Lit political literature. Yep. And it's like, okay. That's I mean, not that's the first time they've well, tried to use I was kids say. in this campaign. But mm. they tried to bring it before the school board yesterday because it was a school issue. Right. And the mayor would not let the conversation happen. She oh, killed interesting. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, and the, interestingly enough, since we brought up Mayor Craig, um, and this, I, you know, I feel bad because I really don't want to have Victoria in on the conversations about, you know, nasty politics because she's got city issues to deal with. Um, but I also filed um, a right to know request yesterday with the superintendent of schools, which was a challenge because the website is not very user friendly and trying to find out how to contact yeah. somebody from the school is very difficult. Yep. Um, but I filed a right to know request because someone had sent me an email um, that has the very uh, has a disclaimer at the bottom of it that says uh, you know that it's a student mail so it was a screenshot of an email and um it was an email back in may from the joyce craig campaign to a guidance counselor at, at memorial high school and then forwarded on i have to presume because it didn't you know whoever screenshotted it didn't include who it went to which thank you because i don't want yeah. the student's name out there um but it's highly 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 inappropriate for the mayor's campaign, first of all, to even be 
approaching the school through this using the taxpayer funded email system but then if it was disseminated off to students how many other emails from the Joyce Craig campaign were disseminated to high school students or junior high you know it's just not okay um and these are to me are just common sense things I posted pictures Peter Parrick doesn't have paid for buy on his signs I filed a complaint with the Attorney General's office about Laura Quinoga's <laughs> mailer because she doesn't say Tammy's who paid for busy. it well, yeah. I mean, just their rules there are like three or four simple 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 election rules that are not difficult at all to follow and it seems that this year more than most the Democrats just are flagrantly yeah and they weren't them. looking for people uh for kids to participate and just be a part of civics. The, the civics no. no it actually stated in that email they need to believe they need in to the believe mayor in and support them. yes her re-election you know for, for me you know what i think here at this table i'm probably the smallest government <laughs> proponent, right and it's just you know in some ways if you think about it like they have to actually mobilize the people in the system, right? The closest to the system. We see it with the unions, and yeah. I've certainly seen people out there in Joyce Craig t-shirts doing stuff for the city that, you know, makes me scratch my head. Like, is that appropriate? Are they allowed to do it? I mean, I'm not sure in the in the two instances where it happened if that was, you know, a private mm -hmm. volunteer who happened to be like picking up trash next to the road. Okay, right. you know, but in a Joyce Craig t-shirt. And so it's like, well, you know, if you're running for office, surely like you should run on your own steam, right? right? And you should have private volunteers that are helping you because that's, you know, putting, because otherwise it's like, oh, are we just fighting right. the, the, the system, you know? Right. And if you're cleaning the parks and you're cleaning the trails, it shouldn't be political. It should be because you want to give back to your city or take care of right. your city. Yeah, it's kind of gross how politicized like a lot of things that you yeah. know and 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 people say i mean I've, I've certainly heard on the bill barry issue people being like well you know don't denigrate this guy's a great guy who's he's like a, he's a volunteer and i'm and, like and i'm like all of that is great stuff but you know what the rules don't bend just for people who are great people doing the right thing right. because you know that's not how the world works well, and, and we we've cleaned the trails and the parks yeah. for years every every parent you know the beginning of every season you're down there and you're cleaning up the parks because that's where your kids and are going no be. one ever noticed that i did it until i put my name on a ballot then right. it was like oh she's doing political things we've we've done it since they were little even right. the trails down on my side by where it'll, it'll always be the shaw's trails right, right, the shaw's right, right. been there mm -hmm. in I know 10 it. years <laughs> um we always used to go down there and clean yep we started again because they were old enough, but we stopped for a while because it became dangerous for them with the amount the amount yeah. of needles and things that we were finding out there. But now they're old enough that they know not to touch right. that stuff. We'll deal with it. Well, so there were a couple debates. There was yep. uh, the Chamber of Commerce debate last week, which I was lucky enough to, to see. Um, there was... Uh, the close-up debate, which I've only been able to see half of because I don't have cable TV. so I've seen two parts, but the closing isn't there. I haven't seen the closing statements, yeah. which was would probably be part three yeah. because the the um, president was on speaking yeah. during that time. So, so it I ended up getting shifted. DVR, so everyone's yes. DVR was off. <laughs> but it seems like also for MUR, because I've never seen it in two parts before, yeah. it's usually just one yeah, thing. Yeah, it must have been. I don't know why. But the first part that I did see, I was very. I thought you did really, really well. I Thank um. You. I struggle with some of the things. I listened to the uh, New Hampshire Public Radio debate that was on yesterday afternoon, and I struggle because I do think that Joyce um, stretches the truth. I don't want to say she's lying. I just think she's either misinformed or stretching the truth. I think you're being kind. I, I think whoever um, um, gave her, I don't think that she understands the legislative process. No. I think whoever gave her the information gave her just enough to try to sort right. of tighten the noose, but they didn't have enough right. information. Right, they didn't give her the, to, the, the whole picture. Right, and she didn't understand how legislation works. So, like, in one thing she said, I voted against a bill. Yep. We've all voted against bills in the beginning that when they finally got through the Fixed. entire process, they were a much better that's bill. Right. That's why we have the process, right. right? We don't see it for the first time, say yes or no, and that's it. Right. it they, they tend to go through a very lengthy process unless they're a great bill or a simple right. bill from the beginning. Well, like one of the things she mentioned was, and I was I right away went, that's not true. She said you voted for, a, uh, for legislation that would have doubled security deposits, which simply is not true. There right. has never been a bill. Security in, deposits in terms rent. of real Right. Right. For Sorry. Rents for um, there is yeah. I don't believe ever been a bill that would have mandated a no. double security deposits. Now there have been bills that would have allowed landlords at their choosing for their own set of reasons to collect first and last month's rent and a security deposit. Right. So yeah, that would make it harder for some people to get into some apartments. But on the flip side of that, 
rents tend to be lower when landlords can collect more security deposits. So it's a trade off. That's what the right. pre market. That's how. The, so that you know. And then the whole the kindergarten thing. I voted yes. against kindergarten. I cost the city two million dollars. It was no. It never cost the city any any no. money, and that money came to the city because it was funded through Kino. Right. In the end, when the bill again Got finished through going process. through the process. And then there was one about stabilization, uh, stabilization funding. And we as a committee decided to kill that bill because we needed to look at all of the funding as one whole picture. Right, and we didn't want bit. to be doing it, putting Band-Aids on things right. anymore. Um, which I think is what they did this legislative session, which yeah, is why there's more funding coming. Oh, there was a lot of Band-Aids. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I also, one of the other big takeaways I've got from the last couple debates is um, there seems to be... It's inconsistent when she says, you know, she boasts about how we've hired 15 new police officers. That's a wonderful thing because, but then she says, there are no crime problems. And I find myself going, which is what you said. So if we don't have a crime issue and we don't need more police, then why do we need to hire 15 more, more police? police? Yeah. I think what um, was most upsetting in that debate yesterday for me, um, because this is, this isn't about politics for me. Anybody, I think everybody involved in this campaign has been changed by right. this campaign. Right. Um, I've got consultants that have been out with me in the parks talking to the homeless people with mm -hmm. me. And you make those personal connections and you, there's no going back, right? So that stays with you and you have to find a way to help these people. I think one of the most troubling things from that debate yesterday was when I you know, she said the Rex is opening and she's got all this stuff happening. I said, none of that matters if people won't go downtown. Right. Right. Like when we pulled up, you were, yeah. you were walking down the sidewalk with me. There were six or seven trash bags lined up right there with people's yeah. belongings and then other things down the sidewalk. That's not enjoying. You don't right. enjoy that's that. You, that's not what you're looking for. But a mom had reached out. on. Uh, she had actually posted on Facebook that she had gone to the Palace Theater with her daughters and they won't be back. She said the show was wonderful. But the experience going from her car to the theater mm. and then from the theater back to her car ruined the entire night. Like she was well, afraid for her children and she had to explain to them because they saw people doing And you drugs. had brought up a point, um, I think it was in yesterday's debate, when you said, you know, when they look at crime statistics, um, even though homicide rates are up, and Joyce Craig did admit that violent crimes are up. And homicides up, are both up. And homicides are up and that overall crime is down. But we hired 15 new police officers because whatever but she said um but you pointed out that people simply don't call the police anymore i mean if somebody breaks and i thought when you said that i thought that is true if you go out in your driveway and somebody's gone through your your vehicle and taken some items i'm not calling the police what's the point of that no. we all know that the police are not responding to um property crime i mean i've never had police respond to property crime um they have other bigger things to deal with because the violent crime is up. Um, and I do think that we've lost some trust between our community, which you've mentioned before, yep. um, our community and the police. And it's not that all police are bad. We and Carla find ourselves having to say this all the time. We're not anti-cop, but I'll tell you, the cops that aren't maybe all 100% on the up and up, the good cops should be outing the bad cops. But and, and that doesn't happen. There's a, no, it doesn't there's happen a with teachers either. No, like, it you does You know, we not. see that, this, that whole union mentality, right? When we've got... We're all one big team, The big, you know. And, and I, I won't say the teachers don't out them. I will say the administrators tend to cover right. for, for bad things well, that happen. Same th what's happening over at Memorial High School right now? I had, I had little birdies chir chirping in yeah. my ear and telling me something was amiss at Memorial High School with the fundraising over there. Come to find out the Manchester police have been investigating for a year and a half. Yep. So something is going on when the police have been investigating. No, and there's so much that's, there's so much happening and but so many people like walking downtown that don't feel comfortable because people are approaching them, they're being accosted. But when I when I conveyed that story about that mom and her daughters, mm. the mayor said that was anecdotal. No, it's actually Let's real. Let's talk about the facts because that's anecdotal. I'm like there's nothing more real or factual about that to that to that woman than that situation. But don't you think, I mean, one of the things I actually love about New Hampshire and like a city like Manchester is it's a small city. I know you have that one photo on, on uh, Facebook where you went and you met with homeless people in the park and you're like sitting on the ground. It looks a little muddy and you're talking <laughs> to like someone. And, and that thought, wasn't wow, strange. That, it wasn't strange. Because safe. if I'm somebody not mistaken, somebody picture. else didn't want you to go. No, they, they didn't, didn't. That was not part of that day. My campaign did not want me. But, to, but so, for so, my own safety. Right, they were concerned but, for my safety. My point is like we're small 
enough where it's like, well, if it's anecdotal and you talk to that mom, it's a true story. It We're is a, a true small story. city, right? right? So it's like anecdotal should count for something well, here. Like if right. I have a story where I'm saying, oh, this is frustrating or I had this <laughs> negative interaction with this politician or this police officer or whatever it's like i'm not making up a story right. this really happened you know, right? and i've had people tell me the response times from the police because they've got because they're up against so much or so long that they don't they don't call or they don't right. get the response right. in, a, in a timely manner that's going to actually well, help well them. and on top of that even after the fact what happened what i hear from people anyways and what i feel myself is we also don't really even know what's going on anymore because what two That's years it. ago yeah. so, they encrypted the the police scanner so you know there could be six cruisers zooming back and forth in front of my house with their lights blaring and I have no way to find out if I should be concerned about being out in my backyard with the dog. Yeah, so we've got you know from from my perspective this will be anecdotal. Um, <laughs> Uh, I think more people are, less people are reporting the crimes, but yeah. I think more people are calling the police to find out what's happening. Right? Which, right, because so, they have no other way to find out. Because they have no other way. So when they say the phone lines are busier than ever, I really believe that that is mm -hmm. part of the symptom of scrambling. I, and, I, and I talked to Chief Capano about this. I've been outspoken about this. I am the first responder for my family. Right. That is it. I call the police once something bad has happened. Right. Right? So if I see something happening on my street, it is my responsibility to take care of my children. Do I bring them inside because it isn't safe? Is it just a traffic stop that's not right. a big deal? Or do I need to be concerned for their safety? By scrambling the, the, um, the scanners, they took away my ability to make those choices for my family. Well, and, and we took away the ability actually of bloggers and journalists and people to follow stories and to right. be able to like, now we basically have, we have, I mean, the, no one's gonna like this a, term, a but response. like the minister yeah. of propaganda, well, we do, poor we, Heidi we, from I mean, the police department, who now has to go and, you know, and she's like, let me tell you what happened. But you know, a lot of times there'll be like cruisers out. And if you check the police logs, which now come out three days after it's like all the pieces don't fit together i would love and actually i would ask you then um you know if you become mayor is that something we could look at like yeah i think they spent something like so five million dollars on that software well and they claim so and they always could so that was the right. thing like yeah, they always, always exactly. sensitive information that's right and so just, and they have in the past. They would they go have. to a different, um, you know, the, alert, the, the they reason know. they did it was because there was this gang that was targeting the police and they were following the, the, the scanner and they were going and they actually police were shot at because okay. because of this. Right. So there was a, a serious safety issue. That gang is no longer here. Right. It's been done. There are probably lessons learned that the police could follow right. from that because right before that, remember, they did the whole study about where the hotspots were. Right. And they would tell you where the hotspots were. <laughs> so, I mean, that could have been part of the problem, right. too. And I, right. And you don't put the whole community's no. knowledge of what's going on with their police and their community on on the back burner because of one group of people. You well, know, like, and, and but I, think I also that, think things that are kept hidden, like when there's no light on something, things tend to get worse. And right. we've seen an increase in violent crime in our city right. and homicides in our city. Right? So I... I think that that is part of it. I would like to see it unencrypted, un mm -hmm. unencrypted, right? Unscrambled, unscrambled, unscrambled. And I really want the police to start. And we've got the patrols downtown, yeah. but they're limited. Yep. And they're not. You know, when I'm down there, I want to see the police actually talking and being with people. Yep. I want the youth to know they can. These are who you go to if you're if your friend joined a gang or you're having trouble because your parents are doing drugs and you're scared for your siblings. We need to have them to be partners in what we do Community here. Community policing and to protect and serve. You know, like remember that Barney peace, Fife and right, the peacekeepers. The peacekeepers. Right. And so I know some. Well, but also we can't have that until there is a marked shift in training, right? Because when we shifted from peace officers, which is a term I like, and you know, that's got the touchy feely I'm into versus law enforcement. Mm -hmm. And then it's literally like law enforcement, like we're enforcing and we're yeah. writing all these laws. Yeah. And it's just like, and hey, there is guys. a place for enforcement there. You know, someone does something that's violent. You need, you need right. the police to be trained to be able to handle those situations. But I, I just, if we, I'm a, I'm a big broken 
window yeah, theory yeah. person. If we start from the bottom and we're working within the community to build these relationships, we're going to have a lot less that escalates. We've got gangs in this city and people are afraid to come forward and tell the police where they are or where their activity is happening. If we have the, that communication and those, you know, that bond between our citizens and our police, right now I just feel like so many people look at it as us and them. Right. And we're not going to solve problems that way. We need to come together and be able to communicate both ways. And, and you know, there, there are word. like, you know, I mean, this is more on a, on a statewide <laughs> level, but there are lots of things that actually could restore that trust, right? Like one of the things that could happen is the AG should, you know, release the Lori's list, yes. the exculpatory evidence schedule, which is a list of bad cops that their own police chiefs have said have lied in court, have falsified testimony, all of that, right? It's like, it's very hard for us to have this conversation and to say, well, everyone should come to the table with, with uh, their best bona fides, their, their good intentions, when it's like, there is actually a group of people who are trying to suppress mm. information that will help fix the problem. So that's certainly, I mean, that's my two cents, everyone knows, but I'm really delighted to hear that, you know, you, you're willing to uh, unencrypt, decrypt, Un <laughs> unscramble the eggs, unscramble, unscramble the eggs. eggs. <laughs> and, I've, and I've talked to Chief Capano about it. Like I'm, I'm honest in what I talk about. I don't say things, you know, here and then act a and different way around them. And say something different them. tomorrow. And you know, and when I said to him, you know, I'm the first responder for my family, and I don't have the ability to make those choices right. without the information. He said, you know, he did say I, I didn't think about it that way because his first. His first loyalty and duty is to his officers, right. right? My first is to my family. That's right. And I think we can find a middle ground here where it works out for both sides because everyone wants the, the police to come home safe at the end of yeah, the night. Of course. Of course. Yeah. That's right. But we need to find a way that works for both sides. I agree. I agree completely. Um, I'm trying to think. So those. transparency sounds like a, you, transparency you're, you're and great it, on that. Not only there, but on all the boards. Like right. I'm seeing we go into, um, not we, but they go into non-public way a more lot. than they ever did under Ted. No. And I have, you know, members of the school board or all demanding board saying we didn't need to go into right. it. And these school board meetings that are running until to midnight, one o'clock in the morning, that's not transparency. These meetings should be two to three hours. If they can't do it within that time, you're going to have to schedule another. I know we're, I'm not going to. And, and that's why I know one of the ballot questions yeah. next Tuesday is, you know, should, should we put students on I the school no. board? And I'm like, uh -uh. Uh, first like, of all, <laughs> they, we have um, a, a system in place where they they engage with students on committees to you know it's not like the school board is saying you're just a student go over there get away from us but they don't need to sit there i mean who's gonna want their kids sitting in a school board meeting to one o'clock in the morning plus it's so dysfunctional right now like i wouldn't want my child in the middle of that no, anyway no but they why so they can't vote they're not right they're not gonna let them vote enough. so what's right. the point so but why would they have a seat at the table parents don't have that have to, well, because right? there's an ulterior motive, I think, yeah, going they on have, with our schools. So the student, <laughs> and I think students should have a voice in their education, uh, especially the, the, when you get to the high school class uh, ages, because they're yeah. you want to you know right. get them involved in what's happening right. in their government. They have student government. Well, right. you know, on the one hand, we're like, oh, we want you to get involved with that, and you can vote when you're 18, but somehow you can't decide to vape anymore. You have to be on your parents' medical till you're 26. To you're 26. You know, I'm like, we, can we pick one if you can <laughs> die for what your is country the adult at age? 18? Like, right. and Right. Then it's 18. Let's, um, right. you know, stick to that. But they do have their own student councils and student yep. governments, and it should and be representative of that That's person, right. of, of that government that comes forward, because they vote on those as a, as a student body, right? So I think, you know, it's sort of like the Manchester Proud thing. We're circumventing our board right. and giving power Rather to other people that aren't elected. Which is why that charter commission is way more important than, than we, people think. we think. And in the NPR debate, you, if you heard the mayor said she would be willing to give that commission its its, it's own, own voting authority. Oh, yeah, no, no. That's the goal of this whole thing is yeah. to give the oh, school board yeah. Um, yeah. their own taxing ability. But let's not... We won't Go have time. <laughs> um, I promised uh, Victoria some time at the end because our show will run through election day. Um... Uh, you got like three or four we minutes. We can't be at the end of this show already. It we is, are. It goes so far. Um, you guys need an hour. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to give you some time to talk directly to the voters. Tell All them right. why they should come out on Tuesday and vote for you. All right. Thank you. Again, I'm Victoria Sullivan. And as I said at the beginning, I was a two-term a two state rep. I served four years in the House Education Committee. Education is really uh, where my heart is. And I think that's where we solve some of these problems is starting with education and really supporting our kids, especially the kids that we're seeing now coming from 
trauma-induced um, situations because of the opioid epidemic. I've spent a lot of time knocking on doors, being in the parks, talking to people all around the city. And I know that people really care about the city, but I also know they're ready for change. And I ask you to vote for me on November 5th so that I can lead the city into her best days because I, I do believe in the city. I believe in her people. I think individually we can make the city incrementally better, but I believe that together we can forge a Manchester whose best days lie ahead. So I, I thank you for your vote. I thank you for your time here today, ladies. <laughs> um, so, folks, don't forget, Tuesday, November 5th, 6 in the morning to 7 p.m., um, Get out there and vote and vote for Victoria. And um, if you have any vote questions, for vote for Gorilla. <laughs> you, um, we've mentioned it before. You can go to libertyballot.com. They make some recommendations on who they think should vote. Um, there will be sample ballots loaded hopefully later today on the Manchester GOP website. If you click on elections, um, there'll be sample ballots for each ward's races as well as the Charter yep, Commission. Including the, you get a, another shot at having a good aldermanic board. Yep, you yep, can we've change got some up your great school board. People. Um, you know, we want to make sure that we return the good people that are there already. Joel Vasher, Keith Hirschman, um, Elizabeth Moreau, um, but it would be awesome if in Ward 10 we could send Ray Hebert and, and if we could seven, send Ross Terrio and send in Ward 4 Jim Roy back to take yeah. that seat from Chris Herbert and then their school committee and so on. So go out to ManchesterGOP.com, um, click on the elections and the sample ballots will be there later today or go to LibertyBallot.com or reach out to us at uh, manchalk at gmail.com and I will gladly send you a sample ballot. Um, with what my recommendations. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. And I me. think we all one more week. <laughs> Woo! One more week. Um, that's all we got for today. I think it's time to, for coffee. I think so. All right. I have to get to work, ladies. Okay, sorry. Have a good one. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.